cardiovascular related diseases in our society is killer number one. And it kills more than any other disease. And nobody is talking about it. And I say a cold shower a day keeps the doctor away. All right, guys, welcome back to Growth Minds. Today we have a very special guest. People have called him many different titles, many different names. Some call him uh, the protector of the people. Some call him Polglot. Uh, but most commonly, most people know him as the Iceman. Welcome to the show, Wim Hof. Thanks so much for coming on. Thanks, man. Uh, thanks, Joe. Growth mind. Uh, good good uh, mind growth, growth mind. I'm into that. I'm into that, absolutely. With the university, so uh, uh, non-speculatively, we are doing research and it shows very incredible results we got. And it'll show in this program, in this show, in this podcast, what it is all about. We are yeah. pioneers and we seek for newer uh, borders and we found them. Yep, you certainly are a pioneer. I mean, I th there are so many things that, you know, as I've, I've, I've been studying for you for certainly for about a couple of years now, as I've been learning a little bit more about what you do. And, you know, there's a certain mind shift that I had when I first heard about the, some of the things that you're doing, because I can recall only a few moments where you, I had to really unlearn some of the things that I've had been taught since I was a little kid. One of them, of course, yeah. is to avoid the cold. You know, you have to wear a raincoat when you go outside. You have to make sure, you know, you sleep with the windows closed because that leads to sickness. So I've always associated this idea of feeling cold with feeling sick for pretty much the majority of my life until I've begun to learn a little bit about what you do and particularly about some of the studies that have come out about your work. Uh, it's, it's, so it's, it's really a transformational change. And I'm sure a lot of people, uh, you know, feel that way, you know, people, my age, people that have been, uh, affected by your work. Yeah, great. Uh, yes, I, I, I'm all about paradigm shift. I'm showing through science. So non-speculatively I'm showing that we are capable to tune in to our bodies into a unknown depth. Whereas uh, science was uh, saying it is impossible for humans to control at will the autonomic nervous system, the immune system, the endocrine system, all not possible at will. At conscious will, it was not possible. And then we showed seven years ago in a study to be able to access voluntarily 12 people after thousands who could not. Hmm. After thousands at doing the same experiment model, then to suddenly 12 people I trained within a couple of days, they show to have control and absolute deep influence into the autonomic nervous system, into the immune system, into the endocrine system, which is the hormonal system. And then uh, there actually, we showed a fundamental difference of what was thought possible uh, to be done by humans at will. Then we changed science and it came into the books. And since then, breathing techniques are much more uh, applicated, much more uh, taken into mainstream uh, as a possible direct influence into the depth of our physiology. With that, you get uh, different neurological pathways at will within the control of humans in the brain. And that is human growth of uh, the mind. And that's uh, what we are talking about. And we can show that we are able to uh, get into depression and, mm. and learn how to rebalance a out of balance chemistry causing a depression or inflammation, whatever causes the inflammation, that is a bacteria or a, inf or a virus, we are able to bring the inflammatory markers, the inflammation at will through breathing techniques 
and using our mind, we bring it down within a quarter of an hour. That makes a total new paradigm. And what is the doorway where we can learn to adopt these techniques and have a better control of the mind over the body? That is the gradual cold exposure. Always said, oh, it's bad to go into cold. Uh, 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 put your jacket on, otherwise you get cold. Now it will be, get your jacket off, otherwise you become sick. <laughs> because we show that the defense system, our immune system, is being activated through going uh, consciously into a stressor. In this case, the cold. Mm. That brings the deepest part of our brain activated. And because we are going consciously into the cold, the brainstem that is at work and begins to connect with our will. It's amazing. And mm. cold is a stress. And we don't know how to deal with stress in general in society. That is because we alienated from stress confrontation. Uh, we, we don't do that. We escape. We avoid it. We are living in a comfort zone behavior. But with that, we deprive ourselves of the right stimulation to grow inside the brain neural pathways. And now we have shown how to do it. And with that, to consciously go into the stress mechanisms of the brain, which is in the deepest, uh, where science was saying, it is impossible for humans to get into those stress mechanisms. Otherwise, there would be no stress for the people. There would be cold, there would be heat, there would be emotional stress, mental stress, daily stress, stress of uh, being lost, and uh, all that, and we cannot deal with it. But then, of course, everybody would adopt those techniques to deal with that stress. And now we found the keys. We found the keys, and I showed it just in uh, uh, Michigan, in, uh, in Michigan, Detroit. I showed it in the university in brain scans how to tap into the deepest part of the brain, the stress mechanisms of the brain, activate it and deal with the opioids and the cannabinoids. Opioids, cannabinoids and the adrenal axis. And uh, with that, uh, you become the alchemist because that's the way we are actually born mm -hmm. to use our will to get into the deepest of our brain. I mean, we own, we have a brain. Why not go into the deepest at will and make use of it? This is not the way we are schooled. And as you well said, I was, I had to unlearn things. The cold was bad. Uh, deep breathing was crazy. And uh, you can't do anything with that. And don't think you can beat inflammation. Don't think you can beat de depression. Because you kill the pharmaceutical industry. And uh, uh, we are built to be able to deal with stress. Bacterial stress, viral stress, emotional stress, mental stress. Anything in stress is cell biological stress in the end. And we are able to tap into the cell processes of the cell biological stress and deal with that. That's what we have found. And then the neurological pathways in the brain that is expanding our consciousness, that is normal, that is natural. That should be happening all the life. When you become yes. older, you got a bigger brain, you got more, you have it expanded, you see more, you are more aware, you become wise. Because when you begin to become aware of the soul's presence, then the flower is blooming. And that is expanding consciousness. And we lost that ability. We are serving a system that is sodomizing the planet, exploiting the planet, becoming insensitive, and it has no power to the unseen like it shows right now. But we got some answers here. Wim, that was a TED talk. <laughs> We covered yeah, so man. much. <laughs> I was gonna say this is gonna be yeah, the easy. Man. This is gonna be the easiest interview ever for me because uh, I whenever I have a guest that's so passionate about a topic like this, you can just go on and on. And uh, but you covered so much just from the from the last ten minutes. There was so many things that you've uncovered, 
And particularly at a time with Corona and people staying home with depression, with not moving as much, with not being able to see people. I mean, you're, you're just kind of like combining one on top of the other of things that cause, um, you know, a lot of immune systems to shut down and depression to go up. Uh, it's, it's a really critical time for people. I, I imagine you're, you've just been getting so much reception about the content and the message that you're putting out, in, especially in times like this. What's What's been the demand been like online is particularly? Yes, I got a lot of uh, podcasts now. And it, the thing is, I have already shown everything through science. So it is just not channeled to the people. Yeah. It is not channeled to the people that people are actually innately capacitated to whatever causes depression and to whatever causes inflammation, which is disease. That we are able to cope with that much better than they tell us right now. Yeah. So I just say this because it's from my heart, but it's also from non-speculative research done. Yeah. And I want to get to the reader. I love the reader. I love the viewer, the participant who is searching, who is searching for new knowledge, for new insights, because the world is on fire. And who is able to extinguish it, that is, the, that is you. That is you, me, and the person who is listening to this podcast. Take it on. We are able and equipped with all the tools to battle any cause and effect of inflammation and of mood regulation that what causes depression. We are able to deal with it. We are born to be happy, strong, and healthy, and we got all the tools. Only we need to awaken them. Get your mindset together. Uh, instead of saying, oh, we cannot battle a virus. We cannot battle bacteria. We, I cannot handle my emotion. I cannot handle uh, uh, mental stress. And it's all too much, all too much. Uh, no, no, no. You got much more than too much. But take them on. That is your mindset. Then take on some breathing, deep breathing techniques to change the chemistry insights to all cells. We have shown this. People doing breathing techniques with the right mindset. What is the right mindset? I just want to battle the bacteria injected. It's a controlled experiment, but I get very sick if I'm not battling it with these breathing exercises. That is mindset. I go and uh, attack, attack the bacteria. So that is mindset, done. Mindset, then breathing techniques. Those breathing techniques we have learned, I've learned it to deal with that in the cold, Cold is a big stressor. It automatically, when you go into the cold, what do you do is <gasps> you wake up to your chemistry. That is what, through the breath. And that the breath makes us the alchemist. If we are able to handle the breath inside, we become the changes of our chemistry, the alchemist at work. Mm -hmm. We can make us feel better. We can bring the life force better into our blood flow. With that, the nutrients, the oxygen, the uh, vitamins, the life force itself going in through the breath. And uh, don't doubt because doubt is like a negative impact. It's neurology, a negative impact on yourself. Don't do that. Don't follow those who say it's all not possible. We have shown it through science. Because it was always, yeah, but maybe yes, maybe no, maybe this, maybe God is there, maybe this is there, maybe that. Uh, we, nobody knows where it is. And I tell you, it's right within you. It's yeah. there, the closest. It's not far away. It's right within you. Well, you, you've gone through quite the journey, Wim, because, you know, I, I do want to give people some explainer in terms of your background and what you've really gone through, because you've been at this for more than 35 years now at this point, and you've done studies around this. This is something you got into when you 44 were- 44 years. 44, 44 years. 44 years. God damn. Yes, consciously, yeah. Amazing, consciously. And you've been doing, so you've been doing this since you were about 17, is that right? 17, yes. 17. Um, so how did this all get started? I wanna give people some sort of background knowledge about who you are, just so that, because we, we went on for 15 minutes and you've, you've, you've certainly, 
you, you've spatted out a lot of stuff out that you know has been very useful. I, I certainly want to give people some background about who you are, how you got into this, so that it really translates more into your mission. Yes. First of all, I'm uh, the most normal person you can ever meet. I'm, I'm, I'm not at all, you know, out there and go. No, I, I'm easy do it. Easy does it. Easy does it. I'm a sort of a gardener. I want to take care of my family. I love animals. I love nature. I talk to trees. They talk back. Really? Talk to trees. I got a person, a friend, who got a polygraph on a tree. And it shows that trees talk. They communicate. They do. Talk, 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 talk. Talk, 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 talk. You can learn to translate that language, and he is, that's exactly what he did. So it, it sounds crazy that I'm talking to trees. How does that work, trees, though? How do you put a polygraph on a tree? Oh, on, on the twigs. On, the, on twigs. the twigs, on the tree itself, on the bark, on the leaves. It's all different resonance. But in the end, it is all the same, just different angles of uh, noise, of uh, 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 audible entity, say. And he translated it into beautiful music. It's amazing, it's amazing. So uh, lately it came with an oak tree, uh, oak tree uh, uh, symphony, and uh, yeah, just bloody amazing. So I, I'm a god and I'm a simple guy, but uh, that is the way uh, I, I began like a child unknown to the world and just being there seeing the seeing wars seeing injustice injustice seeing abuse in the world seeing animals being exterminated killed and the cruelty and i thought this is not the world i want to believe in i want to do something about this so i sat out right over there when I was 17, 16, I set out, I am going to do, I have a dream, and I'm going to realize that dream. That's where the journey began. Once you begin to tattoo on your soul, you got to do it. You are driven. You always will remember it if you swear deeply, a oath, sincerity, uh, 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 holding a dream to make the world a better place, you think it should be, it always then will remember you. And that's what it did. I never lost belief. Yeah, and but the how, first how did it start, if you don't mind me asking, in terms of, you know, why did you specifically choose the cold and breathing? You know, why was that specifically your, your mission when you first started when you were 17? Yes, uh, I was already from 12 years old into psychology, Hinduism, Buddhism. So uh, five years before I went into the call, I was a lot into my head. I, I, I read a lot. I was really a nerd. Getting into so many philosophies and traditions and esoteric disciplines, into yoga, kung fu, into karate, into anything I could get my hands upon. Is that because your Physically parents, and parents were into that? No, nobody. Just me, myself. Just me, gotcha. myself. Uh, I was a stranger in my neighborhood. I was a stranger, really. I was alien. I was, yeah, man, uh, the, he's, he's strange. He's strange. That was me. Mm. Yeah. But uh, I felt so. I had a deeper, deeper urge within me. And I felt good. Yeah, I felt good philosophizing, debating, th thinking of it, contemplating, practicing. And when I was 17... Uh, that was a morning uh, in Sunday. There was a, a lake or, or the channel was frozen over. Nobody around. I felt the attraction to go in. I did that. And there I got an answer of deep connection with deeper physiology directly. It's like, this is it without words. Kind of feeling. Mm. You know, it, it, this is it. When you are struck by love, then you... Don't need to be explained. Hey, what is love? What is happening to me? Hey, uh, do, should I do this? Yes or no? Things like that. No, you know, this is it. You are struck by lightning. And, and that is the way I felt right over there. And what was that? Was that like you went into ice water? Or were you taking a cold shower? Like, what was that specific moment when you realized? 
outside in the park, in the channel, frozen over. It was ice water. But I did not feel the cold. It was power. I felt sheer power. I felt a direct, instant connection with deeper physiology of myself. I found an answer which I had been philosophizing and debating about the five former years. Hinduism, Buddhism, about Christianity, mystical Christianity, about esoteric disciplines, etc. I all did it in those five years. You cannot imagine maybe a 12 year, what does a 12 year old do? But sometimes a 12 year old can rule the world better than the idiots right now. I agree. You know? I agree. But that, that's crazy, it, though. It, did, did someone push you to go in? Did someone encourage you to go into? I, I'm just so curious to know what drove you to exactly. just want to jump in. It was like there was a calling yeah, or man. something. That, that it is. It, it, it is. When you fall in love, you do crazy stuff. When you fall in love with something, you feel you, the attraction. You just do it. And then the reason is that you feel attracted. That's the reason. So there is no logic. There's possibly logic if you look into the biochemistry of what is happening right there. But there is no reason by thought. It is a reason by a, the law of attraction. And I went in and I found out this is what I was looking for. I was looking for the connection between a, a, a deeper self a deeper self in the, into the physiology. And now it shows that in the university studies that what I touched upon in that moment was the deeper brainstem, the periaqueductal gray hemisphere, the place of the opioids, the place of the uh, euphoric cannabinoids, the endocannabinoid system, thought of inaccessible by humans. That was uh, what I was looking for. In society where I came from, I was not satisfied. I was not at peace with what I, uh, was commonly thought to be normal. You know, wars, disease, uh, depression, uh, abuse, uh, the, the power-driven people, uh, all, all that. That is normal? No, I don't think so. I think control over your health, your happiness, and your strength, an unconditional being here which has no need for something else because everything is already there. We are born with that. That uh, was I, I was looking for through my gut feeling. First, I was debating a lot, and then it was the time to fill it up with the deeper existence of the brainstem and limbic system, and it now shows in brain scans that I am able to tap into those systems voluntarily. And, uh, 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 that, uh, and that makes that 100% of my brain is able to be accessed by me at will. And that is what I teach the people who come to me. Listen, change your paradigm. It's not 16% control we have through our will over our brain, but 100%. And there is only logic. The logic of nature is it doesn't provide us with things we never will use. We uh, learn to not use it. But yeah. hey, if you don't use it in evolution, it says, if you don't use it, you lose it. And so I say, say it is, yes. Sorry, are you saying when you were 12 then, when you felt this calling to jump in to this ice pond in the park? That was 17. Sorry, you were 17. Um, yeah, yeah, you, right. And you, I mean, that's crazy, first of all, right? When so, when a regular person hears and just sees a random person jumping into the ice pond, it's just, it's, it's just, you just unheard of because, well, first of all, I took a cold shower this morning and even before, it, it was been a while, but I wanted to prepare just for, before seeing you, Wim, which was, you know, I had right warm water on and the moment that I knew that I was going to turn on the cold water, before I even felt the cold water, I just started shivering because most people, <laughs> they're, they're trying to stray away from the cold. But for you, when you were 17, did you not feel the cold as much, you know, when you were taking cold showers when you, before you were 17? Is that why you didn't feel that fear 
of jumping in? Absolutely no fear, just attraction. It's a, a going into a unknown experience, but because of the attraction, you just do it. You want to, you want to. Remember, you go back to the love, principle of love. If you are in love, struck by love, you know, the love bug, when it's there, man, you do crazy stuff. You don't think about it, but you go from A to B. And no matter what is in between you and, uh, and, and B, you will get there. You will be like water. So uh, me, when I was in there, uh, uh, going into the cold water, I felt the attraction. And that is the only way to overcome your own mind. It's a, a, a feeling which is stronger than my mind is able, uh, able uh, to control. That it is. That is love. And I was a searcher, a searcher of the soul. And it got me through the cult. It got me to the cult. It picked by gut feeling, this is it, what you need. And then when I was in, then without words, but this is it, feeling, I got, absolutely. And then the other day I came back, I got the same rush. And I, I just built up great power, I became aware of this deep breathing, because that's exactly what you are going to do. You learn to experience deeper and you get a hold of it. Then you get a hold of the deeper breathing. And then I began to do that deeper breathing also a part of the cold. Mm. Amazing what I all saw. By using the deep breathing, manipulation, pneumatic manipulation, pressurizing into the brain, into the chemistry, into the neurology. I could see all the chakras, very much more clear than any yogic book is telling us. And that's all uh, learned by going into the cold. The cold is my teacher. It is a teacher which makes your thoughts go away because you gotta be. And that being is a stronger part of survival of sheer being. It's deeper in the brain and it comes out, it's stronger than your thoughts. And then the thought processes and your sheer feeling and survival, the purpose of life all coming together, all the layers of the brain coming together and they are connected with all the body. That's where the control over the body began. Yeah. And that's basic. And we are not schooled in this in our society. But still, we are dealing with a lot of stress and we cannot deal with it. I tell you, the cold is the way to learn about the stress mechanisms in the brain to deal with any kind of stress. I so at that time, sorry, last thing, at that time, they called me crazy. And now they have respect all over the world. And I'm teaching a lot of doctors, a lot of professors. We are all working together. And it's, and it's great. The new terrain we are finding and exploring is so much more to come. It's amazing. It's amazing. And, and, and I, I agree. I mean, the, the thing about the cold is it activates such a primal reaction that is very rare in our regular everyday you know society where we, we live under a great roof for most people we we eat more meals than we should in a day and oh, yeah. it's sometimes for most, topic. I, that, that we'll get into that for sure there's a lot to go into uh and yeah, the, th the thing about this is is it's for some people it's really one of the biggest stressor kind of events if they were to take a cold shower of their whole week sometimes because most of us don't get enough exercise. We don't go through enough stressors that we have it back in our, you know, in, in our tribal days, like our ancestors. Um, but the, 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 I want to get into a bit of the science uh, about the cold wind, which is uh, I want to really understand from a biological perspective, like what, what is actually happening when our bodies under immense cold water uh, or, or ice water, because certainly one thing, it makes it very hard to breathe, which I think is what makes people fear the cold as one aspect of it. Tell us a little bit about what's actually happening when we're, when we're facing the cold. 
Yeah, amazing. Uh, the cold water immersion, gradual cold exposure, makes our vascular system optimize to its natural condition. The natural condition of our vascular system, which contains millions of little muscles, it's about 120,000 kilometers of capillaries, veins, and arteries within every body of us. They contain uh, millions of little muscles, very primitive muscles, to help the blood flow go through. When we go gradually into the cold, then the contraction and opening of those vessels and uh, capillaries are being done. Thus, the little muscles, the primitive muscles, millions of them, are stimulated. They help the blood flow go through in the transportation system, the vascular system. With that, we get a lot better transport. It sends then the oxygen, vitamins, nutrients, life force to the cells a lot better. We get a lot more an uh, energy. Logical. Not only the heartbeat, the heart rate is going down with 20, 25, 30 beats a minute, 24 hours a day. It means stress will go out of your body. We live in a very stressful society and our heart rate needs to solve our blood flow going through all the time, and it is stressed because it is uh, bumping more, uh, pumping more than it should. That is causing a stress reaction. It causes cortisol, glucose, adrenaline all the time because uh, accelerated heart rate is only for stress situations there, for danger, danger. When danger is there, then the heart begins to pump harder because adrenaline and glucose needs to be pumped through the system fast. That's uh, the function of the heart. Now what we do is bring it into a stressful uh, situation wherein the vascular system is not optimized and the heart rate needs to pump more into the system to deal with the stress existent. And it, it's all day going on. Logically, cardiovascular related diseases in our society is killer number one. And it kills more than any other disease. And nobody is talking about it. And I say a cold shower a day keeps the doctor away. I make it very simple, very simple. I can explain a whole book about what is happening in the vas cardiovascular system and the way it works on cell level, the way it works in the deepest of our brain, and all into the bone marrow, into the DNA, into the telomeres, into the protective uh, cold shock proteins around the cell. I can talk about it in uh, 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 very long. Please but do, please do. Short, yeah. Take the cold shower. The cold shower peaks, makes the adrenal axis peak a moment, just a moment. And that moment is enough to be triggered to get to the utmost functionality of your body. And that's the way you're gonna feel if you take a cold shower. When you get out, you feel like renewed. And that's, uh, that, that is great for the day because then it's like a vaccination, a natural vaccination. When stress later in the day is coming, your body is already alerted. It is exactly there how to deal with the stress impact coming uh, on the body, dealing with the chemistry inside, causing stress, overreaction, overpressure, and then the body doesn't know how to deal. In this case, it is ready. It's awakened. It's awakened to deal with the stress because it dealt with the stress through the cold shower. So is it kind so, of like working out your heart? Because I do want to get into this heart disease because a lot of people talk about, especially with, with you know corona happening, upping your immune system, which we'll get into. But you're right. I mean, the number one killer in, in, in America, certainly probably around the world as well, is heart disease. And men particularly have a problem with this as well. Um, so when you're facing this like cold stressor and your body is telling you everything to get out of this cold is, and your heart's pumping, pumping like crazy and your blood, blood vessels are constricted, is that just, in, in very simple layman terms, is that just like your heart working out just like you would be doing push-ups or bicep curls it's like training your body to 
to become more stronger, more resilient? Yes, absolutely. When you go into the cold shower, then it's you who is going into the cold shower. You are doing this consciously. When you do it consciously, then your will is connected to the actions and to the stress inflicted upon you. That means you are consciously in, into it. Your neurology is connected to the stress impact happening. That means you learn to how to become uh, peaceful, in control, while being in a stressful situation. That is what you do by going into the cold shower. Only the, we are very, very well equipped to go into a cold shower. It's absolutely hormetic exercise. That is positive induced stress upon the body, like sports. But in this case, we are dealing with the vascular system. The best vascular fitness training exercise is going into a cold shower. With that, you are doing this consciously. You connect the neurology with the body and deal with the stress inflicted upon the uh, greatest organ of yourself, which is the skin. You connect with the skin. You directly know how to uh, activate the adrenaline to withhold and adapt to the stressor. And uh, with that, uh, uh, you become uh, connected uh, through the neurology with that stress mechanism. And then later, when the stress comes in, mental stress, emotional stress, this stress, that stress, uh, congestion, uh, you have to do more deadlines, uh, etc. then you are able to activate this stress mechanism just by thought. I've shown this in Michigan. I've shown they thought this is not possible. This is top-down regulation. Instead of the body inflicted with pain and this and stress and that, and then deal with it. No, I top down uh, uh, regulate the stress coming in at the moment when stress is inflicted upon me. This was thought impossible. Now, it was always from down up. And now it is from uh, not only from down up, you become very resilient if you take cold showers. But also you learn to have a top-down regulation power. And that makes you able to deal by thought at will with stress. This was unknown. And I tell you now this. This is based on science. They say this is a transformational technique that will change mental health care. Because yeah. nobody knew how to top-down regulate their mood when it was going into depression, psychosis, into bad feelings, bad emotions, whatever. And now it has been shown in brain scans how to do that, how to tap into the depth of the brain, all very controlled and robustly activate what they thought was impossible by humans to activate. And now it is there. And now, you know, the principle, Sean, when the first time the people run, the 100 meters within 10 seconds, then after 150 years of Olympics, nobody did that. Then suddenly one person did it. And then one year later, at 10, 15 people could do it. Of course, it needs conditioning of the body, but mostly it is in the mind, in our paradigm. We better begin to believe that we are the masters in our mind to top down regulate our mood. And our mood is being influenced by all kinds of stresses, making us feeling bad. And now we are able just by thought to deal with that stress and inhibit it to influence our mood. We want to be happy and stay happy or poised or in equilibrium or in balance. We did not know how to do it. And yeah. now I tell you, we know how to do it. And the cold shower is a great way to learn to re uh, regulate our mood, besides of conditioning the vascular system. Yeah, and in addition to the, the benefits of the mind and, and, of course, the heart, the thing that you also talk about on your website is brown fat. 
uh, and, and the difference between, can you give some people some idea about what brown fat is, how that's different from white fat and what the benefits of um, cold water in, in terms of brown fat and how it benefits us? Yes. Uh, there are, uh, brown fat was considered to be impossible to activate and that was not no longer present in uh, people my age, for example, or 50 years and older, 40 years and older. And now I'm 61. I got a lot of brown fat. And uh, not only uh, that is because of regular exposing myself to the cold and the brown fat actually you get when uh, you are a baby and babies have no uh, ability to run, to warm up. They got this mechanism of brown fat. Brown fat is fat with a lot of mitochondria. Mitochondria are, uh, are like um, uh, uh, energy factories. And they, uh, when the cold comes in, they begin to work, to be activated. So they cause, uh, they cause energy. That is warmth. They generate simply warmth, energy. That's what the mitochondria, that, uh, and those mitochondria, they oxidate. And oxidation is red. The uh, uh, fat is white. That makes it brown. That hence the word brown fat. And what a brown fat is able to do also when it is being exhausted, uh, when the f white fat is exhausted, then it retrieves white fat from all the body, wherever it can get it from. And that is the way people get into weight loss by exposing themselves into cold. Uh, the brown fat will work, exhaust the white fat, then will explore for new white fat to come in to produce energy again. That is the training of the, uh, uh, going into the cold. But now I've shown even a bigger source of energy. And that is uh, done through the mind. I showed in the brain scans, while being exposed, motion, being motionless in a brain scan, motionless, just by thought, to make ice water inflicted uh, 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 or uh, 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 how do you say, um, being exposed by uh, ice water upon the skin, making the skin temperature by being motionless, just by thought, making the skin temperature not going down. Hmm. That is a control at will. The professors there, they say Wim Hof has found the secret of placebo. So placebo is no longer, that's the human power to, uh, uh, the psychic power to deal with uh, healing. Uh, when the doctor is saying uh, this pill works and, uh, and it's nothing but sugar, but it still works. Yeah, that's the human uh, psychic power. And we don't know where it is and how it is. But now I've shown how to deal with that consciously, how to use it consciously. So we don't need a suggestion anymore. We don't need a doctor to tell us this is this and that, uh, and then things are going to happen. We know now how to tap in. And this is the paradigm shift. Uh, how uh, What I want to bring to the people, you are capable of so much more at will within your own body and your own mind. Expand to it. Just take it on. Find out. It's there. So brown fat is one. Then you got the intercostal muscle activity. They, uh, they did not know uh, of this until I showed. Because when I was motionless, my intercostal muscles still worked. They produced a lot of energy. So much that the temperature of the skin being exposed to ice water was one degree up than normal, and it stayed over there. Can you imagine how much energy was being released? It's like a heater was going on, and I was doing nothing. That is being activated just by the power of the neurology of the mind. So we got brown fat, but now uh, that's what they found when they were searching within me. That was a Maastricht or, or in science, nuclear science. They have been investigating on me. And then they found out, oh, we found the secret of the Iceman. The other day in the, in the newspapers, it is brown fat. And then I showed it's not brown fat only. There is more. With your consciousness, you are able to generate even 
with your willpower, you are able to deal with stress, call the stress, and it needs energy to deal with. And we are able to generate just by sheer will, voluntarily, a lot more energy. And when it's coming and we are in control, then bacterial stress, viral stress, emotional stress, mental stress, any stress is being dealt with. Because in the end, it is, there is so much the body needs to maintain that energy we are conditioned to deliver. But when something happens, we don't have this extra energy. And now I found at will how to generate more energy than your the maintenance is needed to have. So we got this uh, uh, new findings. All first, it was the brown fat. That is good. Also for weight loss, very nice, great. Also good for the uh, vascular system to expose yourself to cold gradually, not forced. Gradually, that is all good. And then you got the control of the mind over the body uh, by activating intercostal activity, muscle activity, generating more energy. And then you have this mind power suddenly there, top-down regulation, how to create more energy, the, which you need when it is cold, but which you need when you are sick because the plasticity and neuroplasticity of your body, it needs energy, extra energy, besides of the maintenance of the body. And we normally don't know how to do that, but now I have shown how to do that, how to bring it to the human consciousness. And your work and my work coming together is bringing it out to the people. For that, it is a great platform. For that, I thank you that I'm here, a part of your platform. Thank you. No, thank you, Wim. Thank you, Wim. The, the, the thing that struck me as well in terms of the, the brown fat, it really brings me to, to the next topic that I wanted to talk about. So you're saying that brown fat allows us to regulate our, the temperature of our body so that we can withstand more cold in the future as we develop more brown fat. Yes, through regular uh, going into a regular practice outside in cold, yeah. you will activate more brown fat. But when, once your mind is beginning to work, the neurology of the mind, that means when you consciously go into the cold, then before you go into the cold, you are already activating the body with your mind. Because you know you are going into the bloody cold. And it's cold. It's real. So you, through your mind, through your awareness, are activating the adrenal axis. Yeah. You, uh, uh, you activate and get ready the vascular system to constrict, to be in control. And we have this neurological connection. So only we have lost it because we never used it. Once again, you don't use it in evolution. You lose it. But uh, now I say, it's all there, guys. So uh, the brown fat is when you are a baby and when you are young. Because then your mind is not as much developed. But once it gets developed, you are able to use your mind and to uh, generate much more at will, just at will, to generate a, a lot more energy inside the body. Yeah. That is inside the mitochondria mitochondria energy factories in the cells. We are able to influence into the genes, into the DNA, into the cell, into the stress mechanisms of the cell, into the cell biological stress, all that. And another thing is we are able to go into the thermoregulation of the cell, creating energy to oppose whatever is going to come. Because your mind is not there just for thinking one and one is two and two and two. No, it's learning how to oppose at will, activate the body to oppose stress in any way. Yeah, and that's it's the amazing. big key. The, yes, sorry, sorry to cut you off. That's the big key. That yes, is the sir. big key. So, and, and I brought that up because, sorry, wait a minute. I brought that up because the, the biggest question, the biggest struggle that people have uh, and the benefit of this brown fat being able to help us regulate our temperatures more is that knowing that cold water and taking cold showers or ice baths is a good thing, you're actually creating this positive feedback loop or po positive loop 
where the more cold showers you take, the less difficult it's going to be in the future and the more benefit that you're going to get by continuing to, to take more cold showers. And as you take more cold showers, you get more brown fat, the more resilient you become. So it really is this positive loop that is happening biologically you know, in our bodies um, because the key thing that I want to talk to you about here, Wim, is we know vegetables are good for us. Most people don't eat it, meaning it's amazing that, that the science and the scientific research that you're putting out there in terms of cold water and cold exposure becoming really beneficial for our body. And I think there's a lot of people around the world that are sold on that. But similar to me, where I know that cold water is great, I know that you know a lot of people know that exercise is great. The problem is getting people to actually take action. So yes, I want to focus a little bit on that, meaning uh, you've now not just done it for yourself, but you've trained people all around the world. We, you know, we have a mutual friend that's gone through your program. Um, what is it that can help people really go through their fears? whether it's priming their minds, whether it's being able to withstand the cold longer when they're a part of it, what is it that has worked for some of the students that you've taught to actually go through it and actually go through the cold? Yes. Uh, That is scientifically, non-speculatively, it has been shown that everybody is able to deal with the cold. Gradual exposure, even for heart cardiovascular uh, related diseases uh, suffering people. Uh, I had people with four by- uh, bypasses climbing with me, the Kilimanjaro, in a racket time, in shorts. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, man. So there is no excuse for nobody, anybody who has any fear, and I'm talking a person of 65 years older, Oh my God. And he was capable of doing what younger people are not able to do. And with four bypasses, man, there is no excuse. The call is a great teacher. It brings about the connection between our physiology and our mind. The connection brings back a deep natural connection. And with that comes the ability to deal with inflammation, the ability to deal with mood regulation. If you want that, if you never want depression anymore, if you don't want inflammation, get a hold of cold within your life. And you got all the power, all the tools, all the physiological capacity to deal with that. There is no doubt. So no excuse. Get into it because it is good for you. I love you. I love you. And that's why I make you go into a cold shower. Because you got to be a better person, better version of yourself. Yeah, yeah. And I, I've seen people like singing when you guys are doing the, some of the ice baths or you guys are doing some sort of rituals. Is there any priming of the mind that you do with students to help them withstand the cold when they're first starting? Because it is a real problem, even though I know that it's really beneficial for me. Honestly, the problem is, is actually doing it. This is, this is 99% of the problem, right? We, we have the information, but how do we actually get people to take action? So do you recommend people just jump into the deep end of the pool and just, and just fucking go for it and, and know that the more you do it, the more you'll be able to withstand it because of the things that we talked about with brown fat and our minds being able to control ourselves? Or is there some sort of mental preparation that, or, or even like exercises that you recommend people do for the first time, for the person that has never done a cold yes. shower or an ice bath? What is it that has helped people based on your experience? You know what it is, Sean? Every morning when I go into the cold shower, it is a new experience. It is still cold. Of course, my body is quite uh, adapted, but still I feel the shock. I feel the shock. I feel the electricity. And I love it. I love it. It's always kind of negative. It's like shocking, always. But I know that the benefits are huge. It's so much. It's like you got money, but you have to play a risk in shares. But you do it, and then you get a lot more back, but not in the beginning. But for sure, in this case, it is guaranteed that the investments is by far the outcome. It is simply there. 
It is a, a choice I give to the people. Listen, you don't have to do it. But the best thing you can do for yourself is taking the damn cold shower every day. Because it uh, will connect you with your deeper potential, which is far more than where you have control over right now. Just do it once and say what you feel afterwards and say how it inf affected uh, during the day. And then say, it is not so whim. It makes me just feel bad. There is no energy more. I, I'm, I'm very stressed about everything. Tell me that. Then I say, you are right. <laughs> and I will learn of you. But uh, uh, until then, take the damn cold shower because it is good for you. And you know what? We are very well equipped to take the cold shower. We got all the tools. We got the vascular system. Number one, uh, number, killer number one, cardiovascular related diseases. That is because we think we can live in this comfort zone behavior without uh, a punishment. No, we cannot. The enemy is inside. It's dormant. Our powers are not awakened. Virus and bacteria are able to set in. The blood flow is not flowing the way it should or the way it can. A cold shower is able to awaken our immune system, our vascular system, lymphatic system, and endocrine system. By far the best exercise for your vascular, cardiovascular system ever. We should get it into a mental health care and into a regular health care all over the world. And that is my mission, by the way, to bring this into mental and physical health care all over the world. I'm doing a good job. As a drop out of school, my belief is carrying me and I go through any paradigm to bring some love, power, happiness, strength and health to the people. Take the damn cold shower. It's beautiful. And do the breathing exercises and learn to be the alchemist. That's my message. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, and certainly the mood is, is a big part of it. I know that in Scandinavian countries like Finland, Denmark, uh, I know Netherlands isn't part of the Scandinavian countries, uh, but Iceland is certainly one of them. They, they've been known to take these ice baths and jump into ice waters. Like it's a fairly common thing mixed in with sauna exposure. And I don't know if this even, is- a... uh, but, uh, Even in Sweden, I was lately in, a, in the biggest uh, talk show of Scandinavia on television. And they asked me, because I, I walked in in short, <laughs> it was still winter and uh, I walked in shorts and I walked over through uh, Stockholm in shorts everywhere like I do all the winter. Yeah, in shorts. I always say, make up the winter, your summer. Act like it is summer. That is powerful. So I walked into the studio. I talked to the host and he, the first thing he was saying, uh, I imagine that there was nobody else but you walking in a, a shorts here in wintertime in Stockholm. Now, I said, hey man, do you remember where you came from? The Vikings? When the Vikings, they explored all over the world. They went to, to America in, in wooden ships into the unknown. You know why? Because they were very well adapted to the cold. They were so much more exposed and so much more activated from within. They were strong. They were ruling over the world far before Christopher, uh, Christopher Columbus and for, uh, before the Western world began to colonize uh, the rest of the world. Those were the Vikings. And that Viking blood is within me, but also within you. We all got that. We are all explorers in this world. And the cold is the great teacher to activate the deep physiology of having no fear, but Go explore. Yeah, come to think of it, I don't think I've seen you wear pants. I've always seen your calves. <laughs> every every yeah. video, every I, do you own pants, Wim? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes you know when when there is a a, a funeral of somebody, <laughs> uh, maybe I I wear some pants, you know, for the decency, <laughs> but that's uh, something like that. But I think pants are ridiculous. <laughs> Don't say that to the pants industry. <laughs> I mean, we got legs, man. We got legs. 
Show your land. Show your calves, guys. Show your calves. Um, well, I, what I was saying about the Scandinavian countries, it's crazy that that was kind of the, the it's like a very popular thing there for people to take these cold water baths uh, or jump into these ice, ice waters. And I don't know if it's a causation or correlation, but when you look at the World Happiness Index or report, Finland is the happiest country by, by ratings. Uh, followed by Denmark and, and Iceland and all these different countries. I think Netherlands is one of the top countries right there. So I don't know if that's a, a causation or a correlation, but it says a lot about how cold exposure can certainly, you know, help us increase our moods, right? Yes, they use a lot of sauna, and mm. they run a lot of out, outside, and that uh, you know stimulation through the cold on the cardiovascular system which is the life force itself being transported through the vascular system. If that is not done, then logically the condition of ours goes down and our hormonal uh, condition, which is uh, creating the dopamine, the serotonin, the, the cannabinoids, the, uh, all the good hormones are not so well flowing. And, and it is just logic. Embrace the cold. There is the warmth of life. Absolutely. Yeah. And you, you brought up saunas as, as one of them. Um, I, I wanted to dig into some of the benefits of heat as well. We've talked a lot about ice. We've talked a lot about cold. I want to know a little bit more about how we can use heat as well with the cold that acts as a complement to help us either get over the cold or, or help us benefit from, from a health perspective. Yes. Uh, the heat is, a, a, is also working on the thermoregulation of our, uh, in our brain. This is the hypothalamus. Hypothalamus is the thermoregulator, both of the cold and the heat. And uh, together with that, you are able to train the, th uh, the thermoregulative uh, mechanism, the hypothalamus, which is also very much connected to the emotion. So if you learn to go into the cold, into the heat, you learn how to go into the emotion, to deal with the emotion. That's what you learn simultaneously. Because in the end, cold is emotion. Heat is emotion. You feel it. It's strong. So uh, the one thing what uh, uh, the cold is doing is contraction of your, uh, uh, of your vascular system in the deepest to maintain core body temperature. And what heat is doing is the contrary, is dilatation, opening up completely for the core body temperature not to rise too much. And so both are dealing with the same system. Only one is going in, one is going out. The heat is a great way to train the thermoregulation, the hypothalamus, the emotion. The call does the same. I did a marathon in the cold, in, in running beyond the polar circle in shorts in January. And then I did a full marathon, non-trained, in the Namib desert, in the heat, without drinking as well, half a year what? later. Yeah, this is what I did. And it showed. I never had the experience of going into a desert before. And directly, boom, I was... Believing I was training the thermoregulation uh, mechanism of my body and brain. And I thought, ah, okay, let's test it out together with the physiologist and measurement devices of the university into the desert, no drinking, full marathon, no training, and doing it. And then showing that I was able to control my core body temperature. So my core body temperature remained 37 degrees both in the cold and in the heat, exposed into the extreme. I mean, I'm not a runner even, That's and I, I just do breathing right, and I go, hey, I want to do a marathon, full marathon in the uh, beyond the polar circle. Okay, let's do it. Now, I want to do a full marathon in the, in the desert without drinking, and just do it. And I did it. So, done. Uh, and I, what I can say about the heat, it is also training, uh, it's called hormetic exercise. 
If you stay a quarter of an hour into a hot sauna, then you are exercising because once again, it is consciously done. It's you who is going into the sauna. And when it is getting really hot, then you have to exercise by your mind, activate deeper systems to deal with the heat. That means you are activating mechanisms never been activated because there's never such a stress. Now there is such a stress, you go and link neurologically, consciously with deeper systems that makes you able to connect with those systems. And when then a stress comes in the world, then you are able to activate that, uh, those deeper stress mechanisms and deal with the stress. So both the heat and the cold are great for exercising deep systems within us at will to deal later on with any kind of other stress, any shape. Does it matter for people that want to develop a daily routine or whether at their gym and they have access to a sauna and a cold shower after they're working out, is there any difference in terms of what they should do first? Should they get into heat first and then cold, cold or heat? What, what's, is there, or is there a yes. matter? Oh, it is, it is a big difference. If I say to top athletes, uh, how to deal with the cold, I say before you go into a match, go into the cold, go into mm. the cold. Uh, when you go into the cold, you exercise the adrenal axis. You are into survival because you got to deal with the cold. That means when you are into survival, then that is uh, activating a mechanism that makes you to the utmost of functionality. That is the way the body has, uh, is able to deal with danger. When you go into the cold, you voluntarily, you activate that system. Now, what do you want when you are in a match or in a fight? or in performance, you want to be the best version of yourself. So go into the cold before. Then uh, calm down and be relaxed. But then at that moment, your body is awakened and it's cleansed into the depth to be able to take the full potential in, fully breath instead of a wrong chemistry inside. It is excreted through the cold. It's out of there. The body is cleansed. So the body, the vessel is able to be used to get into the power, uh, opposing power, uh, struggle, fight into uh, the, the uh, how do you say, the equation, get the equation right without disturbances, chemical disturbances in the body. And that makes you suddenly able to deal with the situation because your body is becoming a clean vessel. That is one. Then after, when you did your match, your fight, your performance, people tend to go directly into the cold. I say, don't do that. Wait an hour. Because you are, we are talking physically about super compensation. Super compensation is compensation of the loss you got through the exertion of your body in the action in the match, in the fight. Maybe uh, muscles are torn. Maybe you had to exert more of your muscle uh, tissue, uh, your bones, your this, your that. Your body needs to learn. And it only learns at the moment when you are in rest again. Then it learns how to deal with that to be prepared for the next time. That is called supercompensation. Then when the supercompensation is done after an hour, then go into the uh, uh, ice bath for restoring, for restoring and healing, because the body will be uh, contracted very much. So all the acid, acid, the acidity gets out of the body. And then the body is able to become alkaline. It's able to enter with energies. The neurotransmitters are able to run through and it's all okay. It's amazing how it works all. Mm. And do breathing techniques. The breathing techniques, once again, is learning how to change the chemistry deeply within us. It really is so. And it helps a lot with creating more ATP, 
more molecules. That is uh, adenosine uh, triphosphate, that is mitochondrial activity to influence by aerobic dissimulation means more oxygen getting into the uh, energy factories, creating more energy. And that energy is being used for plasticity in the body, the healing, the restoration, the renewal, and all besides of the maintenance of the body and its energy consumption there, uh, therefore. You see? Mm. So that is the way we use the court uh, uh, in sports, in performance. But in daily life, it also works like that. Uh, uh, imagine, imagine people who have cancer. They are doing more than top sport. They, they have to be on top of themselves. Of their energy being depleted by chemo, by healing, by feeling nauseous, by feeling bad. For those people doing this method, it's amazing. It's amazing. I get a lot of reports back of people having cancer, doing chemo, and they say it was the best time of my life. <laughs> yeah. What, what, what is that? You know? People should get into that. Man, oh man, I got so many miracles to report. I will not start. Sure. It's too much. Yep. It's too much. People are taking this on. And I tell you, this shit works. And it's amazing what you can do with the power you have got inside if you are awakening to it. It's amazing. Yep. We are amazing beings, all of us. Right. So, so uh, just, just to go back uh, slightly into the timing aspect of it. So morning is fine for cold showers, Exor right before like an intense exercise, you don't want to do extreme cold showers. So basically when someone's like working out at the gym, they want to go into a sauna first, you're saying right after, and then after 30 minutes or so, then go into colder water, right? Yes. All good. Yes. Okay. And does that also that, work? That's for... a good resume. Besides of that, we have a free app on our website, which explains it all, which gets people all in the right by protocol in the uh, with beautiful graphics. We work on that every month to embedder it. Uh, it is all for free. We want everybody to be able to access within their own potential for free and show all the uh, signs being done, all the experience of a, a, a natural field work of the last 40 work, uh, 40 years. It's all in there and it's all simplified. Simplified, accessible, and effective. It's all there. So please get, uh, get it to the people. It's on the wimhoffmethod.com and then the free app. Take them on, all is there. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah. No, I definitely, I've checked out the free app, actually. I've, I've had it two years ago, um, and, and I still regularly use it. It's, 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 really, it's really amazing. Um, breathing is certainly one of the things that you focus on in the app and in terms of your methods as well. Uh, I want to dig a little bit into breathing because there's a lot of different opinions out there in terms of how to breathe properly. Uh, I've been taught multiple different ways. Like I used to breathe out with my chest out, uh, and it, it's... Um, it's, I don't think that's the way either, but you seem to be pretty open-minded in terms of how to, how to breathe. Because some people teach you to breathe Easy out with your does mouth. it, yes. Yeah. The thing is, uh, I got it through the science. It was not shown in science, science uh, comparative scientific research, how to uh, breathe in a way, to being able to access into uh, mechanisms and physiology, uh, uh, human physiology, uh, unknown by science. And now, through these breathing techniques, and which is uh, very simple, everybody is able to do it. It's by the belly, fully in, belly, chest, fully in, and then letting go. Belly, chest, fully in, and then letting go. Belly, chest, Letting go. You do this 30 times, man, you get high on your own supply. <laughs> and then suddenly, yeah, man, 
uh, uh, the carbon dioxide will be effectively blown off. Alkalinity is the product. That is one. It will spike. With that spikes the adrenal axis. And with, with that, suddenly you are able to withhold from breathing after exhalation. And that, uh, 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 that creates a deep influence on the chemistry. Because mm. suddenly, after exhalation, you are not breathing for one minute, two minutes, maybe three minutes. Three minutes! Unprecedented how effective this breathing technique is for a novice. If you do it well, you will be able to touch the three minutes after exhalation. No breathing. That means that there is a whole cascade of chemical consequences deeply going on in, inside the body and the brain. Suddenly the brain stem, the deepest of the brain, begins to be activated. And you are doing the exercise, so you learn to neurologically connect with the deepest part of the brain. And I say to everybody, if you learn to connect with the deepest part of the brain consciously, then what other part of the brain is not accessible? Any part. And this has been shown in brain scans. So there is no secret to your potential. It is yours. But find the secret, find the treasure. It is yours. It is your beautiful mind. It's your beautiful soul, which wants to go uninhibited, expressed in your mind and your body. And you are taking care. You are the captain of your soul. You take away what is inhibiting your soul to be expressed. You are a being of light, not of heaviness. A being of light, not in the dark. Mm. That's what we are. We should dance. We should sing because we are alive. That's who we are. And is it so simple? I'm sorry, guys, that it is so simple. It is simplified. It is effective and shown by science. And now I tell you, this is the science of the soul. I love you guys. This is the love I'm sharing. I'm sharing the keys to tap into your beautiful mind and into your beautiful body, feeling great, feeling happy, strong, and healthy. That is the emanation of your soul. Be strong, healthy, and happy. There you find all the confidence. There you find all the prosperity you can pass on to your children, to your beloved. It's amazing. It's love. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, the part about activating different parts of your brain, it's, um, it's, it's, it's certainly amazing. I only wish stuff like this was taught in bigger universities, uh, institutions, and, and, and I agree, it's simple. And it, that's almost part of the barrier, I feel, because for people to justify, uh, you know, the education system is so broken here in, in America. Uh, I know in Scandinavian countries and, and Amsterdam and part, a lot of parts of Europe, you guys are doing it pretty well there in terms of education costs. But in America, for people to pay hundreds and thousands of dollars um, they almost want things to be more complicated because that's how people justify in their minds to pay such a large amount because of how complicated things are. You know, this is part of the reason why we led to the 2008 real estate yeah, crisis. Yeah, sure. Hey, man, I'm a drop out of school. I'm teaching doctors and professors all over the world. <laughs> I'm better than a lot of professors and doctors. <laughs> what kind of universality is that? <laughs> Does it cost anything? It costs breathing. Breathe, motherfucker. Breathe. <laughs> amazing. Amazing. Uh, and, and the big thing that uh, the, kind of the last main points that I want to talk about in terms of activating certain parts of your brain is depression is a big thing, right? Depression is, is certainly one of the top killers. We talked about heart disease. We talked about building the immune system. Uh, but what this allows us to do in terms of breathing, exposing ourselves to cold, Talk to us a little bit about the science about how because this I know this is a big thing that you want one of these big missions that you have and one of the big visions that you have of curing depression around the world. Um, how does the cold and how does the breathing aspect do to our brain chemistry to help us relieve depression or cure it? Yes, so depression is caused by serotonin 
uh, inhibited serotonin uptake and a, a lack of dopamine, same for Parkinson, by, uh, uh, for example, it's the hormonal system. So are we able to access into our hormonal system and rebalance that what is out of balance? Yes, we have shown this now. That's the endocrine system, the hormonal system, and uh, inflammation. So endocrine system, the hormonal system, how to balance that? Are we able to do that, which uh, is able to deal with that, which is out of balance, which is called depression, psychosis, bipolar, schizophrenia, bad feelings, emotional hurt. All that is affecting our hormonal balance. And then we are feeling bad. That's logical because the hormonal hormones are out of balance. Now, we were taught that we are not able to rebalance it at will. We are not taught. And now I teach the people, yes, we can bring it back at will uh, in uh, balance. And with that, you will gain mastery over your mind to bring back balance, harmony, happiness, poise, equanimity, peace in your mind. That it is. And that is done through the breathing, which is making the inflammation go down, which is also helping the cause to... Uh, get things out of balance uh, in the hormonal system. Uh, we bring the inflammation down and we bring the hormonal uh, uh, hormonal system into willful activation. And with that, we rebalance that, that what is out of balance. As simple as it is. The professors in Michigan, they told me, we found the key, the key components uh, th this is the way they published it in uh, neuroscience. Uh, uh, after findings with me, they, this is the way they published it. We, uh, we now have the compelling evidence of the key components of the autonomous processes. The autonomous processes, the keys therefrom, processes in the brain related to mood regulation. This is the way they put it. That what was out of balance and we had no willful control over that is now we found the key components. And now we have the willful possible control to get it back into balance. That means we become the master over our mind in any stressful situation. And that is the message. Guys, wake up, do the breathing. Do the uh, cold showers and find the control, which uh, the control with which you are born with to control your own mood, to deal with any kind of stress in your life. That key is now handed over to you. It's your choice. You want it, it works. You don't want it, I bless you, likewise. Right, right. And going back to the study that you were talking about, is that because, you know, back in the tribal days, where the way humans used to live was they were hunting for food in the wild uh, with shorts on. Maybe, maybe they were, I'm sure they were naked, actually. They didn't have pants on whatsoever. They were, <laughs> you know, surviving the cold winter. They were no running jeans, for their man. lives. No jeans. No jeans, for sure. Uh, no yoga pants, nothing like that. None of that BS no, out of no there. stretchy yoga pants. <laughs> but they were running for their lives, right? And that yeah. allowed us to activate certain stressor responses in our brains where, you know, follow up now to present day, it's just not happening. There, it, there's parts of our brains that are just dead. that are never being activated because of the comfort lives that we exactly. live. Exactly. We have more food that we need. So this, you're saying this is like a shortcut to activate using nature, which is, you know, the things that we already have in our world to kind of shortcut and activate certain of those of those brain uh, parts of our brain that needs to be activated to to regulate our mood and depression. I'm going crazy yes, here. Yes, I right? wouldn't be able I wouldn't be able to explain it better. You got it. You nailed it. So, uh, this is a shortcut. It's a shortcut and it reconnects us with that what was lost through our comfort zone behavior. Through the industrialization and the robotica and the uh, extension tools, 
we have become lazy bumps because we don't want to experience stress in any way. We take the car instead of walking, instead of uh, cycling. We uh, sit in a chair for hours and hours and hours and, and, and keep on doing it. We don't go to run. The cold, man, I got five jackets to put uh, uh, layers upon me, going out, not feel the cold. I mean, nature, we are uh, alienated, deprived of stimulation from the external uh, uh, environmental uh, stresses. Uh, we are built, our f physiology, after millions of years, is still built to be, uh, to be able to be stimulated through the environmental stresses to be optimized. Nature is not a fool. We are fools. And we should get back and take the shortcut consciously getting in like, uh, like a dog. We have to go out with the dog. But we also have this mammal inside. We got to take the mammal out, get the clothes off, and get back in nature, even just for a moment. That makes that uh, forgotten part in our brain and body alive again. And then you will feel 100% alive, not, not 20, 25% uh, or 16% within willful control, 100%. That is, the nature is no fool. We are fooling ourselves. Let's get back and regain control over our mind, which has been developed over millions of years. And it's not to be used 100%. That is not logic. It should be able to be accessed by us at will 100%. And that is rooted all over into the body. And then we are able to regulate our mood, become happy, strong, and healthy. No problem. Beautiful. Win. Well, I commend you for the work and, and the millions of people that you're helping, not just with depression, but, you know, being able to optimize their minds, being able to optimize their bodies and to handle more stressors. It's a big part of something that I know is part of your mission. I lost my aunt to uh, suicide about 10 years ago. And it's a big thing that my mom had to deal with. And, you know, everyone in our family, I know you dealt with something very similar. Um, yes. And, and it, it's, it's a, it's, I really commend you for, for the work that you've done. It seems like you've lived almost in one lifespan what someone can do in 10 lifespans. You know, you've, you've done Kung Fu in Beijing. You've broken world records. Uh, you, you, you speak, what, 10, 10 languages? Is that right? Yeah, I, I, I speak the best language of all of them. This is the language of the open heart. <laughs> I, I speak a lot of languages, but it doesn't matter too much. That doesn't matter, man. The language of the heart understands everybody. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, I mean, it's it's really. I commend you for all that all that you've done, and it seems like you've really lived a full life, uh, a positive life, and and one that is so unique. Um, I'm I'm curious to know for someone that it seems so invincible, and and someone that is has lived all these different uh, aspects of your life. How do you look at death? Oh, man, death is boring. I want to be alive all the time. Uh, death, I, I, I released myself of the concept and fear of death when I lost way under the ice. This is about 20 years ago. I got lost under the ice, breath hold in shorts and ice water, one meter thick, the ice upon me. And I lost the weight. And it was just breath hold. And uh, I couldn't find the hole because my cornea froze. You know, the eyes, I had no goggles on. And I couldn't see the hole. So it was just all a blur. And there you are, breath hold and uh, swimming, swimming for life, swimming for the hole. And you cannot find it. And there I found out because I had the control over the breath done just before entering into the water. I did my breathing exercises very deep, very well, that I actually had control all the way through uh, over my agony, over a drowning, the drowning reflex, the agony, the, the claustrophobic uh, moments and all that. It was not there. I was in control. And there, when I came finally out, grabbed by a diver, he grabbed me by uh, the ankle, brought me back to the 60-meter yard 
hole, the 50 meter uh, hole. Uh, and then uh, I took, <gasps> there I was fully back on again. First, I was yelling a little bit, where were you guys and this and that? I almost died and this. Or what, what, what. But then I found out I had conquered that concept we have over death and, uh, and, and the fear which goes along with it. Man, if you control the time of the death, your breath, your breathing, then you are able to control the chemistry. With the chemistry, the electricity system called the nervous system. When you have to shut down the building, because Elvis uh, needs to leave the building, he needs to go out, man, yeah, some uh, other place. Because we have a purpose coming into this body, we have a purpose going out of this body. And that purpose is the soul. I believe in the soul. I believe in the afterlife like in the before life. And uh, it's, it's not, uh, nothing more than logic. It's matter physics, matter dynamics. It goes beyond our body. It's like a telephone and, and, and uh, our, our data is in the, in the sky, in the, how do you say, the iCloud. It doesn't need our body. It's still there. Our, my consciousness, it's still there and it stays there. Only I am evolving to another body and I'm happy to do so. And I will find out for those who still have the fear how to control the pathway to death and the passageway to the afterlife. I will show how that all works within the DNA within the genome expressions, within the telomeres, and within the brain, within the seat of the brain of the soul, which is the epiphysis, the pineal gland. I will all show that, because I'm into that itinerary with professors and doctors right now. So before I go, I will have shown how to go, and that there is more than meets the eye, and that where fear has no place in that. Just joy, just the joy and feeling of accomplishment. And when you are done, you don't want to do overdo it again. That feeling is going to come. So that's what I think of death. Well, Lim, uh, I'm, I'm really honored to be part of one of the major you know, movements that are happening in terms of spreading your message. Uh, I think this is a great place to end. I recommend people to check out uh, wimhoffmethod.com you've got a free app that you have you've got an online course you've got a book that's coming out uh you're, you're on a roll man i mean it seems like in the last five to ten years uh the world has awakened to the ice man to to the to protector of the people which is the definition of whim uh it's, it's amazing what wow. you're doing Wim. it is uh it's an honor to to have you on and love to have you back on and um thank you so much for for your time hey sean we have likewise all the respect for your work we are bringing out something real good and we're bringing it down to what it is and that is love and that is power to the, all the people and all living beings and respect and harmony with nature that's what we do so we stand up we are proud of what we do and we keep on I believe it, sir. Thank you so much. Cheers, man.